He said, The following program is a paid presentation. Wake up to the Word. Share an uplifting hour with grace and glory and Baltimore's faithful. Well, good morning, gang, and welcome once again to Baltimore's number one gospel program, Grace and Glory, as always. We look forward to sharing with you to inspire, encourage, and empower you. Got an exciting guest, interesting young man by the name of Mervyn Mayo, Mervyn Mayo. joining us this morning. And I'm going to tell you about Mervyn's uh, testimony, or actually he will. But first, I want to welcome you to Grace and Glory and tell everybody, uh, what do you do for a living? Uh, I, well, I have dual jobs. I'm a police officer, Richmond police officer, and I am the minister of music at Truth Ministries, and I am a recording artist. I have three jobs. I'm, yeah, well, okay. Yeah. And you've got two interesting testimonies as it relates to two of those three positions, and we're going to talk about them in just a second. Let's in do fact, it. In fact, that's why we invited you, because we thought it was quite interesting. Okay? Let's do it. All right, plus the music is not bad. Yeah. All right, so let's make our way to our first spoken word, Pastor, or should I say Bishop Dante Hickman over at Southern Baptist Church. He's got the word, and we've got our guest coming back with us in just a minute right here on Grace and Glory. Welcome to the television broadcast ministry of Southern Baptist Church. And now a word from our pastor, Dr. Dante L. Hickman, Sr. By the time of our text, the Apostle Paul was addressing the need for more spiritual integrity and unity among the Christian believers in, of Ephesus. This church that was initially intimately connected to Christ was now more given to political corruption and self-centered material and personal wealth and gain. And by the time we read the book of Revelation, they were admonished to return to their first love before God took their candlestick of light and love away. The believers in Ephesus were doing all the right things, but their love for God was dissipating. And they ultimately lost their first love and their faith in Jesus Christ. They demonstrated that if we are not careful, intentional, and vigilant about our spirituality, that we too will go from strong to weak, from spiritual to carnal, from transformational to conformational, and from effective to defective. And this is why it is extremely important that we never take our spiritual growth and development for granted. But how unfortunate it is that too many of us have become content with being Christians without a prayer life. We're content with being Christians without reading and studying the Word of God, without serving in ministry, without confessing our sins, without giving our tithes and our offerings, and without loving the Lord with all of our heart, mind, and soul, and our neighbor as we love ourselves. Simply put, too many of us have become Christians without Christ. And without Christ and an intentional focus on our spiritual health, we are left to the devices of our flesh and with our own emotional hell. And instead of living with joy, love, and peace, we end up living in sadness, madness, and contention. Subsequently, in our text, Paul focused in on how anger had gripped the church in Ephesus, a church that was steeped in love with Christ, and they were in love with one another, were now at each other's throats. The church had become one of the most hateful places in town. And it's a tragedy when an institution born out of the unconditional, unselfish, and unwavering love of Christ 
is determined to live in the divisive, dismissive, and destructive spirit of the devil. And the question has to be asked, why are we so mad? Why are we so mean? Why are we so nasty? And you ain't got to say it. You look like it. We, we, we look mean. We act mean. We talk mean. We text mean. I tell people when you text me, put an emoji of a smile on there. We post mean. And some of us even worship mean. Some of us in here, I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. It, it doesn't, it might be right, but it don't look right. And it is no wonder that our world is mean and thirsting for conflict and war when the church always seems to be at war within itself. But Paul makes every effort to confront, clarify, and correct the root and the fruit of our anger issues. And he redresses the issue by first telling us that anger is normal. Look at the mean person next to you and tell them anger is normal. Go ahead. He says, be angry. That's what he says. That's what he starts off saying. Be angry. This is this is a very critical statement because too many of us as Christians think that we have to suppress our emotions in order to appear righteous and holy. But I surmise and submit that this is unhealthy. And we must learn the very vast array of emotions that we have and what triggers them so that we can appropriately navigate the realities of our lives. You don't have to, as a Christian, always say, I'm all right, when everything is all wrong. There are sad feelings. There are mad feelings. There are anxious feelings. There are frustrating feelings. There are confusing feelings. There are happy feelings. There are jovial feelings. And you and I must strive to know our feelings and why we feel the way that we do. Because we're carrying out our feelings, allowing our feelings to carry us. He says, anger is normal and anger is not a sin. How do I know? Because he says, be angry, but do not sin. Even Jesus displayed his anger when he called the Pharisees and Sadducees vipers. He said, broad of vipers. Them, them, was, them was some major words without cussing. And he called his disciples a faithless and perverse generation and said, how long do I have to put up with y'all? And quite frankly, my dear brothers and sisters, there are some things that we should be angry about. We should be angry about injustice, violence, greed, oppression, and inhumanity. But it is not enough to be mad and do nothing about what we're mad about. And it is equally not enough to be mad and do the wrong thing about what we are mad about. So then Paul talks about what we do with our anger that can become problematic. He teaches us in fact that this is why we're seeing alarming rates of violence and murder 
retribution, vengeance, and retaliation because people don't know what to do with their anger. And when we don't have a healthy outlet and response for our anger, we tend to react negatively in an attempt to fulfill our voids and our emptiness on the inside. Amen. Ephesians 4, 17 through 19, Paul says, this I say therefore in testifying the Lord that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk in the futility of their mind having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart, who being past feeling have given themselves over to lewdness, to work all uncleanness with greediness. Paul was essentially saying, that when we became Christians filled with the Holy Spirit, we became different than other people in the world. Look at the person beside you and tell them I'm different. And don't you allow anybody to come up to you talking about you think you all of that. You think you're better than us. You think you're different. I'm not all of that. I'm not better, but I am different. When we were in the world without Christ, we were empty people. So we reacted out of emptiness and hopelessness. We had no critical or comparative thinking. We had no comprehensiveness, no conviction, no connection, no conscience, and no sustainable compassion. And when you have nothing and feel like you have nothing, you will justify taking something from somebody else to make yourself feel better. I don't condone what the Palestinians or the Hamas terrorists did to Israel. Neither do I condone Israel killing innocent civilians and children. But when you got 2.3 million people living in 25 miles with nothing to eat, it stands to reason that if somebody lets the gate open, something gonna go down. But what you will discover is that hole in your soul cannot be filled with emotional, material, and social things. Paul says to us that when we don't have a healthy outlet for our anger, we will try to fulfill our voids and we'll act negatively to try to free ourselves from victimization. Verse 21 through 24 says, if indeed you have heard him and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus, that you put off concerning your former conduct. Look at somebody and tell them, you can't act like the old you. Come on, help me preach in here. The old man, which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that you put on the new man, which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. Paul explained here, and if y'all come to Bible study, I wouldn't have to work this hard. Paul explained here, that as Christians, we still have to deal with our past mindsets. Uh-huh. Look at your neighbor. Look at that new outfit. Look pretty. But there's an old mindset in there, too. 
And if we're not cultivating a change of our minds through the Spirit of God, we will operate according to the impulses of the flesh. Did you hear what I said? You can be in church for 30, 40, and 50 years. And your mind has still not been changed and you're still not growing in your spirit. So you judge and act according to your feelings. And, and I don't know about you, but my flesh despises being violated. I don't like to be disrespected. And I don't, I don't know about you, I don't like to be taken advantage of. So that when you do me wrong, <laughs> and if I'm operating in my old mindset, I feel like I gotta cut you off, or cuss you out, or cut you. That's why I'm leery <laughs> about carrying my gun with me. Because I want to make sure I'm saved and I act saved when somebody unsaved does something unsaved to me. <laughs> so one of the members came in the office uh, other week told me, Pastor, I just want to let you know I'm licensed and I'm and I'm current. I said, Well, leave that in the car. You know, and, and then you coming in my face telling me you got a gun at my desk. <laughs> leave that. Well, I just want you to know I, I I'm strapped. <laughs> and you don't know who you sitting next to. We ain't checked you before you came in here. So it behooves you when you sit down next to me. Good morning. Praise the Lord. Glad to see you because you don't know. Lord, keep my mind clear. But the new you in Christ can't keep justifying the actions of the old you without Christ. At some point, we have to grow up in Christ and take some nails, take some names, and take some negatives on our way to our next level. Come on, somebody help me preach. Look at your neighbor and tell him I got somewhere to go. And I ain't got time to get stuck in the old me. I got to catch up with the new me and where God is taking me. But when you don't have a healthy outlet and response for your anger, you'll react negatively in an attempt to fulfill your void and emptiness, in an attempt to free yourself from feeling victimized, and in an attempt to feel vindicated. That's what Paul said we want in verse 25. He says, therefore, put away lying. Let each one of you speak truth with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. Hey, 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 look at me. Paul knew that there were liars in the church. Oh, my God. Let me, okay, okay, okay. For you holy and self-righteous and sanctimonious people, let me give you a real discovery. Church people sin. Church people gossip. They talk about people. Oh, no, no, church people steal. Church people backstab. <laughs> and if ain't nobody said nothing to you yet in all this whole list, you might need to move your seat. Church people lie. Go ahead and tell your neighbor, church people lie, child. And while they lied, nobody wanted to deal with the stigma of being lied on. People will lie on you, but hate you for lying on them. 
And when people lie on us, our initial feeling is to want to defend ourselves and how people see us and what they think about us. And before you know it, everybody is trying to cover themselves by exposing somebody else because we think that the only way to overcome being offended is by offending others and defending ourselves. Talk, Dante. But some of us have lived long enough to know that hurting others ultimately hurts you. Hindering others ultimately hinders you. Let me give you a shouting point. Your vindication is sometimes, your vindication is in your victory despite your vulnerability. Oh, y'all ain't helping me preach. See, you want to appear strong and you want to appear clear. And you want to act like you ain't got nothing wrong with you. But I dare you to be able to give God praise that, yes, I don't dot every I. I don't cross every T. I don't have everything together. I ain't got a lot of money in the bank. Everything ain't adding up for me. But doggone it, like Celia in the color purple, I'm still here and I still got joy. Hmm. Have mercy, Lord. Subsequently, <laughs> Paul was keenly aware that spiritual people don't always know how to handle their mental, emotional, and psychological issues. You know how to shout and you know how to dance. You know how to talk in tongues, but you don't know how to control your mouth. You don't know how to control your attitude and your behavior. And you don't know how to respect other people's boundaries. So he offers them <laughs> the Jesus approach and remedy to their anger issues by not telling them to not be angry. Instead, he counteracts their anger with a counterintuitive approach to their anger by telling them to be angry. But don't act on your anger in a negative or a sinful way. Paul, how do you do that there? In other words, he says, we have to learn how to use our anger rather than allow our anger to use us. You got it. We have to know what to do with our anger issues. And when someone or something triggers our anger, we have to convert it into a spiritual growth moment where we, number one, maintain our energy. Oh my God, y'all are so blessed to be sitting under a good preacher like this. Everybody ain't getting this kind of preaching. You ought to be excited. <laughs> Ephesians 4, 26 and 27, he says, be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath, nor give place to the devil. Don't, don't go to bed mad. Uh-uh, don't, don't go to bed mad. My, my, my old baby said, Adela Robinson, we called her nanny. She said, scratch her and get glad. Oh, my God. <laughs> this text teaches us that when we react negatively with our anger, that it hurts us more than it hurts anybody else. Why? Because it can take our peace. It can take our power. And it can take our place and put it in the hands of the devil. I just preached that verse and you missed it. And now you can't go to bed because you're stressed and strategizing. And now your marriage is on the rocks because y'all can't resolve a simple issue. And now you're in jail for life because somebody looked at you the wrong way or cut you off on the road. And in the moment you thought you were showing how tough you were, but you really exposed how tender and thoughtless you really are. But the question we must learn to ask in every situation, you ready, is does this or do they even deserve my energy? Yeah. 
Oh my God, when that gnat, when that fly, when that ant of a person comes at you to attack you and to get on your nerves, it, it ain't no big devil, it's a little devil. The devil knows how to get at you. He, he don't bring the one you expect, he bring the Negro that you wanna say, please. When, when they come, you gotta immediately Arnold used to tell me, count to 10. I used to have to count to 100. <laughs> Does this or do they deserve my energy? My wife is an expert fly killer. <laughs> She's different from me. I grew up hunting that fly. Fly getting the house. I watched that fly. I've given all my mind to that fly. I forget about everything and everybody focused on that fly. And when that fly lands, I come in for the kill. I use my open hand. And sometimes the fly get away and I get mad. <laughs> But then it come back, I hold my breath, almost kill myself. I got it! <laughs> she said, good job. And then another one comes zooming by. But my wife, she takes a water bottle. Sometime it might have a little poison in it. That's why I watch her when she cooking my food. <laughs> Killing me little by little every day. She see that fly, and you know what she does? I'm like, what you gonna do with that? She whoosh, sprays it. And you know what it does? It slow the fly down. And then by the time the fly gets heavy, it lands. And then we just step on the fly. Y'all, that just went over y'all head. Some of us are using too much of our own energy on flies. Look at your neighbor and tell him you gotta spray your flies. Spray them with prayer. Spray them with meditation. Spray them with worship. Spray them with forgiveness. Spray them with love. And sometimes just ignore them. Because the Bible says if you resist the devil, he will flee. I got some Bible knowers in here. Paul says to us that sometimes you got to convert it into a spiritual growth moment where you maintain your energy. But you also got to maintain your elevation. Look at your neighbor, tell him maintain your elevation. Verse 28, let him who stole steal no longer but rather let him labor, working with his hands. What is good that he may have something, here it is, to give him who has need. Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good, here it is again, for necessary edification, building up, that it may impart, here it is again, grace to the hearers. Y'all just waiting to shout. Paul is is here trying to focus us in on who we are and what we have to give rather than seeing ourselves through the lens of losers and losing something. And this is important because when we feel attacked, we lose sight of who we are in Christ. And we forget that we're the head and not the tail that we're above and not beneath. But God sent me back here to tell somebody that we can't afford to let the devil bring us down to his level. And we can't internalize, here it is, what we're not willing to analyze. 
Come on, help me preach. I just said something out of my mouth. When I said this to my wife, my wife said, because what's coming at you may not always be about you. That's enough for you to shout the rest of the week. You've been watching the television broadcast of Southern Baptist Church, where Dr. Dante L. Hickman Sr. is the pastor. If you desire to purchase a copy of this week's broadcast or any of our other media treasures, please call our media ministry at 410-732-8566. Welcome back. And as I mentioned, our guest with us today is Eminem. Yeah. Not the candy. Yeah. But the <laughs> Mervyn Mayo. Mervyn Eminem. Mayo. Now, yeah. Mervyn's got a new single out. It's called God Did It and doing very well on the charts. Congratulations on Thank the you. single. Appreciate that. But what also intrigued me is the testimony behind uh, not only the single, but how you kind of evolved in gospel music mm -hmm. as it relates to getting on everybody's uh, radar. First and foremost, let's give people an appreciation of that testimony by sharing with them what you do and how you came about doing it. Uh, well, I, I, I work um, at the Richmond Police Department. I'm a school resource You're officer. The I'm the popo. Uh -huh. uh, but I'm, I'm, I'm a friend, you know. And, okay. um, and how that came about is, um, I know it sounds cliche, but um, I went to um, Richmond Public Schools and uh, an officer there befriended me, an officer named Curtis Simmons, and he kept me out of trouble because I grew up. Remember the name? Too. I remember, yeah. I grew, I grew up in the projects, and so he kept me out of trouble, so he would take us to places like Water Country, Bush Gardens, you know. And I always said, if I ever get the opportunity to become a police officer, I want to do the exact same thing that he did for other kids and I've been doing it for the past 17 years. So you actually became a police, did you pursue a career in when law I, enforcement? When, when, yes I did, I got 19 years in and when I interviewed they asked me why did I want to be a police officer and I told them I wanted to work in the schools with the youth and give back. And they said so you want to be a police officer to fight crime? I'm like yeah that too but I want to give back to the kids so uh -huh. that was in my interview and they so hired that, me. That was the, 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 the mission. That's the nucleus of why I became a police officer. And did you get a chance to fulfill that? Oh yeah I've been doing it. I've been a police officer for 19 years. I've been in the school for 17 years. So literally two years in. I was gone. Gonna take me to because we have to do two years. Okay. On the street and then we can go where we, where we want to go and I've turned down numerous uh, uh, positions to uh, oh, do lateral transfers, promotion, yeah, because it'll take me out of the school, and I, I actually love so working with the kids. what is it now that keeps you going about your work in the schools? Um, the kids, I just, I love working with the kids. I try to keep the kids out of trouble. Um, I see a lot, of, I see me in a lot of the okay. kids, and, and I'm able to relate, because you know, like I grew up in poverty, so I'm able, to, and I work at the school, I'm at, I'm at Richmond Alternative School, that's a school where kids go that have made bad decisions. They're not bad kids, they just made right. bad decisions. And I made a lot of bad decisions when I was younger. And so uh, I, I feed into these kids, I, 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 I preach positivity, I preach you can do this, you don't need to continue to do that, you can do that, and it, and it works. Do, do you ever have the occasion where one of those young people come back and say thank you? Yeah, yeah, all the time. Uh, I was at the uh, taco stand not too long ago and a guy was riding past, he's like, Mayo, because they call me Mayo. Uh -huh. I had no idea who it was. He actually made a U-turn and was like, hey, remember me, you get the wrestling in the office wow. and, you didn't, and you didn't lock me up, but you put me in them handcuffs and let me go. He said, man, you changed my entire life Wow. that day. That's what he said. And I got wow. chill bumps because I was like, that's the whole reason I'm that doing it. That was the whole it. reason. Yeah. Now, we did get to tussling, though. Well, that's okay. But, it, but he didn't go to jail. He so. didn't go to jail. Yeah. But he did find his way he did. Yeah. as a result. Exactly. Now, you found your way as far as the music in an interesting and unorthodox way because something unique happened. You were just sitting at a piano one day? Yeah. I, 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 I record songs, and I normally post them on Facebook or post them on YouTube just to post, you know, just somebody may want to hear it. And this particular day, I, I went into um, the church, and I recorded Marvin Sapp, he saw the best in me. Uh -huh. And um, I uploaded it on, on Facebook. Okay. And I woke up the next morning, and it was like almost a million or more views. A like, million? Yes. Not, not, not 10,000. Not 10,000. Not 100,000. No. A million. Yes, and I was like. Overnight. So I thought something was wrong with the computer. So uh -huh. I'm like, all these zeros <laughs> popped up. Well, maybe I need a new computer. I need an Apple Somebody computer. Somebody done something to hack right. my computer. Right. And then uh, it just went viral. It just went, it went from there. Wow. And mm -hmm. so how did, you, how did you process that when you saw what, it, what had happened? I didn't process it. Um, um, the kids at the school were telling me, Officer May, I saw you and you went viral. I saw that you went viral. And I'm like, oh, whatever. You didn't whatever. know what viral was? I didn't, really, I didn't. You know, because I'm not like, even though I post, I'm not like a social You're not media. Into it like that. Right, right, no, right, no, right. no. And then I posted another one, Bow Down, 
and that got like over a million views and that went viral. So from that point on, I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm a viral sensation now. I'm a viral yeah. sensation. I can tell well, my wife that, I'm a celebrity. How did that translate into recording? Um, well, how did that translate into recording or, or signing with with, 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 the, with signing with the label, okay, Ty so, Scott? So what happened was I, um, I got an inst instant message or I think it was a Facebook message from a gentleman named Brian Scott. He said uh, um, he was like, interested in me coming to preach at his church. And so Brian we, Scott, Brian interesting, Scott, yeah. yeah. And so I call, you know, we talk. I mean, we, we talked for a long time. We were talking about our wives, talking about our careers, uh, talking about seafood, you know, uh -huh. I mean, just having a good time. And then I told my manager, this guy, in Indianapolis wants me to come preach at his church. So set that up. He's like, what's his name? I said, Brian Scott. He was like, <laughs> Brian Scott in he Indianapolis? Yeah. He was like, you realize that's the president of Ty Scott? I'm like, I had no idea. No idea. You know? And uh, we just it went on from that point. I went so and you preached. went to the church, you preached? I preached. This was um, Easter. I think it was an Easter Sunday. I preached. And um, I think a month later, I was signed to Ty Scott. Wow. Yeah. So looking back at that whole process, uh, I guess God did it. Does God did? It. Won't it. He do it? <laughs> Won't He? Won't yes, he? he will. Yeah. Uh, and so now, you, looking back at all of this, uh, how do you reconcile what has just happened uh, in your life? Because literally, I think it's safe to say it's transformed your life, hasn't it? It, it has. Um, it transformed me to a platform that I that I'm happy to be in, to be able to minister to people that would have never heard of right. Mervyn Mayo. Because it know? takes not only what you do with the kids, but also what you do with your music to a whole nother level. To a, a whole different level. It puts me on the platform of people I would have never reached before. So I'm able to preach, preach God's word to literally just about everybody. Well, look, we're gonna, I'm gonna ask, see if we can find a way to get out that video, but God did it. Tell me real quick how that came about. Oh, that, God did it. He, he, God did it. So we were in the studio recording another song, and, and we took a, a little breaky break, and that's what we call it, a breaky break. And, um, and the producer was like, listen to this music. And I heard it, and I was like, dude, that's my, that's my new song. God did it. And he was like, yeah. And I was like, man. And literally, I wrote that song in 15 minutes. And produced it. And produced it the and next that's day. That's your new single. And that's it. We God come did back, it. we're going to tell folk how they can get a hold of it, okay? Cool. All right, let's make our way to our next spoken word coming from Pastor Jason Clark. Over at the Omega Baptist Church, and then we'll return with our guest, Mervyn Mayo, Eminem, Mayo, on Grace and Glory. Greetings in the matchless name of Jesus, our Christ. I am Pastor Jason Clark of Omega Baptist Church and Ministries. If you are looking for a place to worship, not just on television or online, join us anytime at our Owens Mills location, 4424 Painters Mill Road at the American Legion Hall. The time is 10 a.m. and you're going to have a power-packed hour of praise, prayer, and preaching. And if you're in our Baltimore City location, join us here at Omega City, where you'll be encouraged by the Word of God, 12.30 p.m. at our city location, 5503 Richard Avenue, 21214. Two times on Sunday, you can come and worship with us. And if you're a Facebook friend, join us on Pastor Jason Clark. Facebook, you'll find me there every Sunday. And Bible study is coming back at 12 noon and 7 o'clock. So stay tuned for the Word of God. Have a blessed day. I want to say this to you because there comes time, I'm sharing with a friend of mine, there comes time that uh, I find myself in a corrective, instructive mode. Like most parents, uh, when you feel like you're parenting correctly, you're doing a lot of instruction and a lot of correction. The problem with parenting that way is our kids often need compliments, say amen, amen. and inspiration. Right. But because you're a parent, most of your life you'll spend doing corrective things and instructive things, yeah. not necessarily inspiring things. Yeah. I, I don't know, Renee, do you feel like most of the time when you talk to Jay, it's corrective and instructive and not a, a lot of compliments, not a lot enough. Well, let me ask Jay. That, like, I just want, I want some more compliments. I want some more uh, uh, inspired inspiration. Because that's what parents do, right? Like most of what we spend our time with is correcting when they make mistakes and instructing them so they don't make the mistake in the first place. But what happens is, is that that can wear you out. Right? Uh, the other side is the parent that, that always compliments their child. Their child can't do no wrong. Right? Everything they do is right. And, and then you give them trophies even when they lose. My child needed a participation trophy. Because he tried his hardest. But they lost every single game. But they don't have an ice cream social party just like the window. And, and, and 
I get it, I get it, I get it. And so how do we find, here it is, the balance. So, so Alicia, my preaching, because I like instructive, corrective, because I always want to get better, I don't mind if I don't get a compliment, I'll compliment myself. Amen. Amen. That, that's why social media is fun for me, but I don't need y'all to tell me I look good. I ain't going, I ain't got to go online and be like, I hope somebody like my picture. <laughs> I like my own picture. Amen. See, I grew, I grew up different. We didn't grow up with this thing where people need likes. Because I like myself. Amen. So I look in the mirror and I dance away, but I'm still good looking. Right. So I don't let anybody tell me that. She said I wasn't cute. I don't care what you say to me. I, 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 I'm my own confident president. I need y'all to say, I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Somebody say, man, that's how God made you, and that's how God made me. And so I don't need nobody else to co-sign that. And the, and the confidence that you walk in will make you understand that God didn't put you here for other people to have approval over you. No, love yourself. And whatever you do, live like you're going in. Live like you're going to win. Even when your friends are friends. Even when they're not friendly to you, even when they don't like you. And, 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 and here's the thing. Notice that when the haters and the, and, and the enemies show up, that's your time to shine. I was waiting on y'all to get here. That's somebody tell me in school. Why are you always dressed so nice? You should have never said that. I'm about to put on a whole fashion show. I was playing at first. <laughs> so I'm, I'm not trying to get what I'm trying to tell you guys is what happens to so many of us is that we're waiting on the pat on the back and you got two hands. <laughs> Live like you're gonna win. I'm gonna tell you what happens. Here it is. Joshua the sixth chapter, verses one through sixteen. Father, just allow me to be what you call me to be and be used by you in Jesus' name. Amen. That's what 6 one through Jericho was bolted and barred shut because the people were afraid of the Israelites. Ooh. Can I tell y'all something? Don't tell nobody. Your enemies know there's something great in you that you don't even believe in. Amen. Your, your enemy knows that if you ever figured out the power source on the inside of you, the greatness that you really are, you would be a danger and destructive to their whole kingdom. So what the enemy wants you to do is be depressed and despair, come on now, despondent and downtrodden. Now, because if you ever really took hold of what God has put in you, that so much greatness is in you, there's nothing you can't. The enemy wants to post, I'm coming at Fox 45, the enemy wants to post how bad you are in math. Because once you understand that you created math and triangles before Pythagoras, you will understand there's nothing on God's green earth you can do. Come and have happen. He wants you to believe that you're dumb, you're stupid, you're ugly. I wish I had somebody to that because that's what the enemy power is, is causing you to defeat yourself. More battles were lost by fear than by lack of fight. You didn't lose the battle because you, you couldn't fight. You lost the battle because you were afraid to fight. The bully wants you to back down and turn over your lunch money before he throws a punch. And church, the kingdom of God has suffered violence and the violent has taken it by force because they forced us into believing that fear was our only option. What are you afraid of? Being broke? You've been broke before. What are you afraid of being broken? You've been broken before. What are you afraid of starting over? You started from scratch, baby. And you can make biscuits, amen, without a box. That's what God has raised. I ain't afraid of no noodles and noodles. I made it on government cheese. Jericho was bolted and barred shut because the people were afraid. 
afraid of the people outside. They stuck in their own house. They ain't coming outside. Why? Because they were afraid that they had heard the big bad Israelites were outside. They was ready to make that thing happen. He can go in. I could just see him out there looking out the window, looking out the castle bar, and just saying, I ain't going out there. You, you know who they are. Them are the people that beat up the Egyptians without having to throw one punch. You, you know who's out there, don't you? Y'all ain't hearing me here. Though. Those are the people that drowned Pharaoh and his red army yeah, in the Red Sea. Y'all know what I mean? Y'all know what I mean? But those are the people who God fed with water out of a rock. Those are the people who have quail that they didn't have to hunt and bread that they didn't have to make. Those are, are the people out there that God has brought for the last 43 years. Amen. Through the wilderness. Those are, are the people out there that can defeat a giant. Those are the people out there that can turn, amen, bitter into sweeter. Those are, are the people out there that have all kinds of power because they have this God on their side. Uh, that whenever he rises up on their behalf uh, they are invincible. I wish I had power y'all in here that knew that you are unstoppable. You are invincible because God is on your side. Uh, and if God be for you, uh, he's more than the whole world uh, against you. Somebody scream the job is mine. Uh, scream it right now the job is mine. Somebody say I'm blessed in a bit. walking in here wondering if they're going to get you the job. You ought to be wondering whether you want it or not. Yes, right. 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 Worry about no job, I get another one. What about no house? I'll get enough. Y'all, y'all have we have got to start living like we're gonna win. Because all these things are gonna work together for the good of them that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. And no good thing will he withhold from them that love him and walk up right. Y'all better hear me in here. I ain't worried about nobody leaving me. Because you just leaving me for somebody to be replaced with somebody better. Why aren't y'all saying amen? Don't make me show off in here. Don't don't make me go, don't make I'm trying to behave. Uh, but when you recognize you can lose something uh, and God will give you back something better, you ain't got nothing but a shout on something. Y'all better get some Beyonce. Y'all went to the concert in a box. Everything you got in a box. No one could enter in. No one could leave out. They were shut in because they were afraid of the Israelites. And that your enemy is more scared of you than you are of them. But they're trying to convince you to be scared so you don't even fight. I'm telling you, more, this is what I heard the Holy Spirit say. More fights were lost by fear than by a lack of fighting skills. God, I wish y'all would get this. So the Lord said to Joshua, I'm about to hand Jericho that's barred and shut. I'm about to hand Jericho, its king and its warriors, over to you. Y'all don't know about transfer. I'm getting ready to transfer everything you're trying to defeat right into your lap. I'm getting ready to transfer. Why aren't y'all getting happy? I'm getting ready to transfer everything that you owe into the amen paid for column. Somebody ought to shout like that. I'm getting ready to transfer all of your glory over here to worship. I'm getting ready to transfer all of your God over here to do. I'm getting ready to transfer everything that was working against you is going to start working for you. You're about to make slaves out of everything that was soldiered up against you. God, I like this. He said, this is what the Lord said to Joshua. He said, I'm about to hand it to you. Yeah. <laughs> He's about to hand it to you. I got nobody going to get this. Man. I'm about to hand it to you. Put your hands still close. I'm about to hand it to you. You ain't ready to receive nothing. Look at you. I'm about to hand it to you. There we go. Somebody got it out. I'm about to hand it to you. When somebody ready to hand you something, you don't fold your arms. When somebody ready to hand you something, you don't put your hands down. When somebody gets your hands up, you open your hands up and say, God, right, here I am. I'm Whatever you're gonna hand me, I, I don't care if it must belong to somebody else. I want you to hand me what you said you're gonna do it. And then, I'm about to hand you Jericho as kings, as warriors. I'm about to give you everything. I'm gonna give you royalty. I'm gonna give you soldiers. I'm gonna give you success. I'm gonna make you feel special. I'm gonna give you everything that was theirs is now gonna be ours. God, I love the Lord. Watch it. He's about to get this. It's going to get good. It ain't there yet. All the soldiers have to do me a favor. 
follow my instructions. What I want them to do is march around the city uh, uh, once a day for six days. Because what I want to see is can you follow instructions? I, I don't want to see if, if you can be big and bad. I, I know that. I, I want to see can you be obedient? Amen. Oh, hey, we're going to preach this. Can, can you just do what I say to do, even though what I'm asking you to do is just a little. I'm not asking for a lot. I'm just asking for a little. If you can do the little thing, y'all help me here. It ain't going to take much. Just, just, just do the little thing. Y'all help me here. He said, he said, I don't need you to do everything. Just do the little thing. Because if you do the little thing, you have faith the size of a you can talk to mountains. I, I'll move the mountain. I just need you to have faith like the sea. Yeah. I don't need you to move no more. I'm, I'm the mountain mover, God said. I, what I need you to do uh, is have faith the size uh, of a musty. So can I get you to do me this favor? Walk around the city uh, once a day uh, for six days. Here we go. Uh, seven priests will carry ram's horns. So I don't, I don't usually bring them out. I don't usually bring them out because it's not for public dis demonstration. This, this is for me right here. Uh, one of my members said, Man, bought me a ram's horn. Right. And I love me a ram's horn. Whenever I go into the office, I blow the horn. I don't, this ain't for public. This is for me because I want God to know. Y'all help me here. Yeah, I can man. follow and show. He said the priest will carry the, the ram's horns of, of the ark. But on the seventh day, yeah, you march around the city seven times while the priests uh, blow the horns. Now, you know, most of us, as soon as we get a horn, We, we ain't waiting for We're going to get that horn. We're going to blow that thing. Because you, you can't give nobody no toy uh, and, and not expect them to play with it. Come on, come on. Everybody, you know we got kids. Come on now. If you hand me something, see how this thing works. You, you can't, in fact, you can't, you can't hand me a McDonald's bag of fries and tell me wait till we get home. Perfect. Where y'all at? Where y'all at? Wait a minute. I'm going to judge. You, you, you can't. You can't. We're not going to eat in my car when we get home. You first one. <laughs> Seven times while the priest pulled that horn. Here he goes. Here he goes. When you hear a long blast on the horn, all the troops must shout very loudly. Oh, hold on. I, I don't get to use my bow. I don't get to use my javelin. I don't get to use my arrow. I don't get to use my sword. And so you're saying to me uh, that this victory is going to come from a horn and shout. The wall around the city will collapse. Uh, then the troops must charge straight in uh, to the city. The wall is going to come down uh, when my worship is right. Y'all help me here. But the wall ain't coming down uh, until I give uh, God, the right kind of worship. And it's a worship uh, that's not just based on emotion. Uh, it's a, a worship that's not just based, watch this now, on energy. Uh, it's also based on obedience. Uh, because this worship has to be done uh, the right way. Can I keep moving here? Uh, so the Bible says, Joshua the son of Nun summoned the priests. Uh, he didn't summon the soldiers. He said, priests, pick up the Ark of the Promise. Uh, have seven priests carry, carry seven ram's horns uh, ahead of the Lord's Ark. Watch this. Uh, he told the troop to march around the city. Uh, let the army march ahead of the Lord's ark. Watch this. Uh, after Joshua had given the orders to the troops, uh, the seven priests carrying the seven rams horn uh, ahead of the Lord marched as they blew their horns. Uh, the ark of the Lord promised followed them. Uh, the armed men went ahead of the priests who blew their horns. Uh, the rear guard followed the ark while the priests continued to blow their horns. Watch this. Uh, and Joshua ordered the troops, don't shout. Make any noise or let one word come out of your mouth until I tell you, uh, shout. And when I tell you, shout, uh, I want you to make noise like you've never made noise uh, before. Watch this. It gets good. It gets good. Uh, a silent strategy is a strategy uh, of silence. Let me see if I can make this make sense. Uh, God was saying to me yesterday when I was all, I was in my feelings. I was all offended. I was, I was mad. I was ready to go to war. And I said, God, uh, I'm going to get him back. Oh, yes, I am. I'm, I'm, I'm full of ammunition. I got all kind of stuff I could say and suggest and, and tell. I, I can go all kind of places, do all kinds of things. And God said simply this, shut up. Come on now. 
They're shut in. But I need you to shut up. I don't like this here. Um, they can't go out or in. Uh, but I need you to do the same thing uh, with your mouth. They're in a shut-in in the house, uh, but I need you to have a shut-in with your mouth. Uh, some of y'all are going to get this in about five minutes. Uh, God says, I'm getting ready to bless you. I'm getting ready to hand you something. Uh, but before I hand you what I'm about to hand you, uh, I've got to see, can you handle it? Uh, and the only way I know you can handle what I'm about to hand you uh, is can you keep quiet uh, when I tell you to keep quiet? Uh, can you remain calm uh, when I tell you to remain calm? Because some of y'all, watch this now, are your root, your worst undoing. I feel like talking in here. Some of us are our own worst enemies uh, because what's keeping you from promotion uh, is that you don't know how to be quiet uh, and watch God fight so battles. Uh, what's keeping you from winning uh, is that you want to say everything that's on your mind. Touch your neighbor and ask him one question. Can you keep quiet long enough for God to fix all the things that are falling apart in your life? Here's what the old folk used to say. Throw a rock in the flock. The one that hollers is the one you hit. What are you saying, Pastor? Most of y'all can't be quiet. As soon as somebody hits you up with some hurt feelings, says one bad thing about you. Greetings in the matchless name of Jesus, our Christ. I am Pastor Jason Clark of Omega Baptist Church and Ministries. If you are looking for a place to worship, not just on television or online, join us anytime at our Owens Mills location, 4424 Painters Mill Road at the American Legion Hall. The time is 10 a.m. and you're going to have a power-packed hour of praise, prayer, and preaching. And if you're in our Baltimore City location, join us here at Omega City, where you'll be encouraged by the Word of God, 12.30 p.m., at our city location, 5503 Richard Avenue, 21214. Two times on Sunday, you can come and worship with us. And if you're a Facebook friend, join us on Pastor Jason Clark. Facebook, you'll find me there every Sunday. And Bible study is coming back at 12 noon and 7 o'clock. So stay tuned for the Word of God. Have a blessed day. Welcome back. Hope you've enjoyed the program today. Got a little tidbit drop on you, but before we do, uh, we mentioned uh, before we went to our second spoken word about how to get your music. How, mm -hmm. how can I get it? My website, MervinMayo.com, is where uh, all of my music is. Or you can follow me on uh, my YouTube, which is Mervin Mayo. It's just me and my son, my son and I, and we're the only ones. So I'm not hard to find, Mervin Mayo. So um, in, in retrospect, with everything that has happened in a, le a relatively short period of time, uh, with your music and everything. What do you think God is saying to you now in this season of your life? Um, well, you know, God's want me, God wants me to put out his word. You know, God spoke to me in a dream and asked me, told me to preach his word. And so uh, I'm, I, my ultimate goal is to also be a preacher. Um, I minister now. I preach sometimes. But um, I just want to get God's word out. I just want to preach and teach the gospel of Jesus, you know. That's and right. he's given me that platform. And so I'm, I'm so grateful for it. So what do you think the need is in this particular season that we're in with so many things that are going on? Oh, boy. I mean, a lot of people are losing hope. Um, so much going on. People are giving up. So I think the need is just to understand that, that God just wants us to be still and just, you know, know that he has got to be patient, you know, and just wait on God. So Wait on him. Wait on him. So if folk want to connect with you and follow you, social media, I heard you say that. Yeah, yeah. My YouTube, uh, Mervyn Mayo. My uh, uh, Facebook, Mervyn Mayo, Instagram, everything's Mervyn Mayo. So, yeah. and when you click on that YouTube, make sure you subscribe to my YouTube. All right, listen, we enjoyed you, man. Your yeah. sound, I, especially on God Did It, uh, you, you, your sound, it, it hits, it yeah. hits hard. I, I and, appreciate uh, that. Everyone that I've exposed the song to really loves it. So we encourage you to continue doing what you're doing because yes, you're making a difference, okay? Thank you, appreciate it. you gotta come that. back and see us again when you uh, come into your kingdom. Yes, sir. Please remember us, okay? Thank you. All right, don't you, remember, don't you forget to join us again next week. Same time as always and party. Continue to walk in His grace and live in His glory. We look forward to connecting with you right here on Grace and Glory.